NBC's Dr. Nancy Snyderman violated her voluntary Ebola quarantine when she went out to get some soup. But in her defense, when she took her Hippocratic Oath, she did say first bisque, then do no harm. Hey folks, welcome to the new show. I'm Ross Everett and be prepared to quarantine yourself for the next two and a half to three minutes. This should go without saying, but if you've been put under mandatory quarantine and you want soup, order in. It's really not that hard anymore. Seamless web, E24, spoon rocket. Honestly, pick your poison as long as your poison isn't potentially poisoning everyone around you with Ebola. Ebola is not something most of us have to worry about. We know it can only be transmitted through direct contact with someone who is currently suffering from symptoms of Ebola, but still, I'd like to keep as much distance as possible between me and the disease with the 50 to 90% death rate. You lose me at any percent death rate. Here's a good rule of thumb. If it's easier for you to connect yourself to someone diagnosed with Ebola than it is to connect yourself to Kevin Bacon, then you're too close to Ebola. Or not close enough to Kevin Bacon. Either way, fix something. But Ebola is hard to contain, which is why the Center for Disease Control has put such strict rules in place for those who have or are coming in contact with the virus on a day-to-day -day basis. And it's also why when you sneeze on a plane and say, sorry, I came from Africa, this happens. I think the man that has said this is an idiot. And I'll say that straight out. Hear me? So this quarantine business is serious, which is why when NBC News' Dr. Nancy Snyderman goes into voluntary quarantine after one of her cameramen is diagnosed with Ebola and then subsequently violates that quarantine for a soup run, you could be a little miffed. Mostly because while this pleasant graphic she retweeted shows we have nothing to worry about when she violates her little fun voluntary quarantine, which has since been turned into a less fun mandatory quarantine, by the way, scientists are busy speculating on whether or not the Ebola virus has mutated into something much more contagious, which turns this infographic into this one. I should say that Ebola turning into an airborne virus is about as likely as herpes or HIV becoming airborne, which is not at all, but scientists do believe that we are looking at a more contagious version of the Ebola virus than we've seen before. It carries a much higher viral load that makes it catchier than Shake It Off by Taylor Swift, but will kill you quicker. That's why protocols are so important. You want to nip this thing in the butt before it gets out of hand. That means training hospital staff on what to do when there's an Ebola scare. The country's largest nursing organization surveyed 2,000 of their members of which 76% said their hospital hasn't briefed them on how to admit Ebola-infected patients. So until the hospitals get their act together, they'll be adopting the two-finger method, wherein they hold up two fingers, cross one over the other, and hope it's not Ebola. Still, there's wonder as to why in the year 2014 we still don't have a vaccine for Ebola. Well, the head of the National Institutes of Health said that had it not been for budget cuts over the past 10 years, we would have likely had one by now. We all know that there's only one way to incentivize the US government to fund something, and that's the threat of the Russians doing it first. Well, good news, because you know who's working on an Ebola vaccine? The Russians. They're winning. Can we let that happen? Will we let that happen? I think not. They're already working on three vaccines. Get on it, America, or the blood and the stool of those infected with Ebola won't be the only red we're seeing. Communist Russia, it's back and it's worse than Ebola. What would you do if you came in contact with someone who had Ebola? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, you guys, if you can click like on this video, that means you liked it. It's just a very simple, click that thumb, I know you liked it, real easy, right? And also, if you wanna see more videos of the like, remember to subscribe to this channel. We put out new videos Monday through Thursday. Until then, these are my goodbye guns. <laughs> Red Bull Energy Drinks have come under fire for their brand slogan, Red Bull Gives You Wings. Apparently they don't actually do that, and that's a problem for Benjamin Carruthers, who sued them for false advertisement.